Chapter 27, Rolando's Folly Caleb froze, not sure of what he should do next. He timidly handed the radio back to James Richton as they heard the voice of Rolando booming once again. Hello, is anybody listening? I have the radio, and I have your friend Peter here also, taunted Rolando, growing increasingly annoyed. You lay a hand on my son, you're a dead man, hissed James over the radio. Ah, who do we have here? I thought I was talking to Caleb, continued Rolando, but no matter, you have something I want, and I have something that you want. I want all the guns and medical equipment from the cave. You bring them to me, and I will release everyone that I have here, explained Rolando. What do say? Stall him, Caleb, perhaps, if we can find some more men to help us, then we might be able to take the camp back, suggested Richton. But who are we going to find to help us? asked Caleb. The men from my village are still hours away, reminded Nico. Maybe we should just give them what they want, pondered Caleb, looking back at the crates loaded in the back of the wagon. This Rolando is one greedy devil, I'll say that for him, piped Richton. No matter how much you give him, he always wants more. Suddenly, Caleb had an idea as he grabbed the radio back from Richton. Mr. Rolando, this is Caleb. Well, hello there, Caleb. Your friend Peters told me lots about you and how you found this cave of treasures, teased Rolando. Yes, the cave, you're right, it was full of guns and equipment, continued Caleb, so much equipment that we couldn't even put it all on our wagon. I'm afraid there's so much more that we will need another wagon, sir, a larger wagon to carry it all back to camp. Caleb paused a second to let it sink in, that is, unless you want to make another trip later on. In a way Caleb was telling the truth, there was more equipment, not much mind you. He crossed his fingers and hoped his idea would work. Yes, of course, you're right. I'm glad you thought of that, beamed Rolando. I will send some of my men out there with a bigger wagon. But do they know where the cave is? asked Caleb. Rolando paused and sighed, realizing his mistake. Yes, you're right again, smart boy you are, he retorted sarcastically. I will send some of my men, along with two of your men who brought me the first wagon. You stay right there and wait for my men, and then when they are all loaded up, you lead them back here to this camp, instructed Rolando. Do you understand? Oh yes, sir, I understand, vowed the voice of Caleb over the radio. Great idea, Caleb, he fell for it, whispered Richton. Very well, they're on their way, barked Rolando, turning to Wilkes and giving him orders to take the other wagon out to the cave. Then Rolando motioned for his crew to untie Uriah and Joseph. You two will help my men to find the cave, he ordered. Remember, time is of the essence. Let me go instead cried Stephen, I know the way to the cave better than anyone. Rolando rubbed his chin, no, I have other plans for you son, teased Rolando. Sir, urged Dominguez. Yes, Mr. Dominguez? I overheard some of the men here earlier talking about the cave, they said it's about an hour's ride from here, I figure, by the time we return with the wagons, it will be nearly dark, reminded Dominguez. Yes, I've thought about that already, Dominguez. It's now time for Plan B. Sir? Dominguez frowned. What are doing, Caleb? asked Richton. Caleb looked at the others. Here's my idea. We hide the horses and wagon in the trees over there, where they can't see them when they come down the trail. Then we wait for them to get here. With those, Caleb pointed to the rifles in the wagon. Nico and James both raised their eyebrows and nodded. It might work, exclaimed Nico. There will only be two or three of them at most. I'll get the rifles ready, cheered Richton. Nico shook his head. No thanks, I prefer to use this, explained Nico, patting his bow. Suit yourself, son, but I think I'm going to give one of these beauties a try, said Richton, patting the rifle crates. Okay then, let's get ready. They'll be here in about twenty minutes, piped Caleb. Rolando began pacing around inside the porch area of the Daniel's house, pursing his lips together slightly as he gathered his thoughts. He called to Dominguez again. Mr. Dominguez, I want you to take a few of these young men and escort them to the rear wagon over there by the fence, ordered Rolando as he began choosing people. This one here, he called out, pointing to Peter first. 
Take our little radio man here and put him in the wagon over there with the two men from the Indian village. Rolando continued pacing and pointing. Take this one here as well, he pointed to Mark Redding. As Harvey Redding rose out of his seat to protest, Rolando reached into his vest and pulled out his revolver. Please, sir, sit down and no one will get hurt, Rolando calmly ordered. Redding slowly sat back down as he shot Rolando an angry stare. It's okay, Dad. I'll be all right, reassured Mark. Finally, take this one here, he said, pointing to Stephen. You're Caleb's older brother. That's perfect, continued Rolando. What better way to motivate our young Caleb? Dominguez ordered two of his men to begin escorting the boys to the wagon. Mr. Rolando, what exactly do you think you're doing taking our boys? asked Mary Daniels, standing up from the rear of the porch, where she and several of the ladies and young girls were sitting. You'll get your guns and equipment just as you asked. You've sent your men and our men to go collect them. So, why do you now have to take our children too? Rolando smiled, stroking his chubby chin again and letting out a laugh as his belly shook. Of course, Miss Daniels, you must think I'm an evil man, I'll bet, huh? Mary Daniels frowned. First, I'm Mrs. Daniels to you, and well, you, sir, are an evil man, Mr. Rolando, and you are also selfish and greedy. The Bible tells us in Psalms 37 not to fret because of evil men like you, because they will be like the grass and wither, she continued, as Rolando interrupted her. Rolando snickered loudly, Oh my good lady, I know your kind only too well, he continued, waving his pistol around in the air. You've all have come out here to start new lives for yourselves, you and all your Bible believers. Thinking you're so perfect, he chortled. You think that because you're out here in this new wilderness, you're now free? You're here to start a new world, I know, I've heard that story before. But I got news for you, all of you, barked Rolando in his tirade. The world hasn't changed from what it was before, it's only grown larger now, with more room for men like me to rule over it, and people like you. Rolando continued his ranting and raving for a few more seconds, then stopped suddenly next to Rebecca Elgin as he noticed Martha and Elsa sitting on the floor. An idea came to him. Mr. Dominguez, take these two young ladies here and put them in the wagon, barked Rolando, bending slightly over to speak in a lower voice to all the women. If your men don't return with the things I want, well, I am sure my sailors will enjoy having you around for company, said Rolando with a wicked grin. Suddenly, out of the corner of his eye, Rolando saw a quick movement as someone was quickly charging towards him. Like hell you will, you keep your hands off of them, you devil. Hollered Elijah as he ran headfirst into Rolando, knocking them both down to the ground. Much to his credit, given his size and lack of physique, Rolando recovered remarkably well, still holding onto his pistol tightly in his hand, even as he righted himself again. There was a shot in the flesh, and Elijah was on the ground. Rolando stood up once more, shaking himself nervously all over, with pistol pointed at Elijah who was still on the floor. Chalina hesitated, then arose and went over to Elijah and placed her hands on his shoulders to roll him over. At once she began examining him, placing a finger gently under his ear. A weak pulse, but he was alive. Rolando glared at Chalina, then the others, I warned you, all of you, do what we tell you and no one will get hurt, now look what you've done, declared Rolando. Dominguez, you take these two ladies to the wagon and tell the men to load up everything we have, we're leaving. But sir, what about Wilkes and the men in the other wagon you sent to get the guns? Rolando, still visibly shaking, began his pacing once again. Dominguez, send a rider out to catch up with the men in the wagon with this message, continued Rolando, loud enough so that everyone in the camp could hear. As soon as we have all the guns and equipment loaded in the wagon, bring them immediately to the ship, and then we will deliver the children back to their parents. If we have no guns by morning, then the children will remain with us to be sold as slaves, bellowed Rolando. Yes, sir, replied Dominguez. Oh, and Dominguez, one last thing before we leave this dreadful place, barked Rolando, turning to face the others, as a warning to any of you who might have ideas, like this man, pointing to Elijah, who was still being tended to by Chalina. I order you to set fire to these homes here, so these people will know my absolute determination, ordered Rolando. Yes, sir, replied Dominguez. 
Caleb, Nico, and Rickton had been carefully preparing their trap. The horses and wagon were tied up in the woods farther down the trail, and they had enough time to collect scattered brush to build some blinds off to the sides of the trail. Nico had even helped Caleb, much to the amusement of Rickton, prepare some basic face camouflage using the available tree sap, berries, and tree leaves in the area. You really think that's going to help? asked Rickton. Of course, it will. Just watch, close your eyes, turn around and count to twenty, dared Nico, standing near a line of trees nearly thirty feet away from Rickton. Rickton had always enjoyed playing hide and seek as a child, so he decided to play along. As soon as Rickton turned around and started counting, Nico took off into the trees, moving quickly. Even Caleb was amazed just watching him at how swiftly and quietly he flew through the trees. 18, 19, 20, finished Rickton, looking out where Caleb was still sitting on an old log. Where is he? asked Rickton. You have to look for him, smiled Caleb. Oh, and don't ask me to help you either, said Caleb. Rickton stood up, looking in every direction he could. He slowly turned around in circles, looking high and low, as he then turned back towards Caleb. Where is he? Did he even move at all? Oh yeah, he did. In fact, he's moving right now, hinted Caleb, amazed at what he could see immediately behind Rickton, as his friend Nico closed to within a few feet of Rickton. He's moving, where? Caleb smiled, very close. Boo, shouted Nico, nearly sending Rickton to the ground. Caleb laughed as Rickton spun around to see just how close Nico was. How on earth did you do that? That's amazing, roared Rickton. It's like you were invisible or something, laughing as he continued finishing up his blind. You'll have to show me how to do that later. Nico held up his finger in the air, SHH, he whispered. I hear someone coming, get ready. The three of them crouched and crawled into their respective spaces and waited. Wilkes sat to the far side of the wagon seat, next to Uriah and Joseph Daniels, with his rifle pointed at them, scanning the woods ahead. In the back of the wagon sat one of his younger assistants, Lucas Spencer, who the rest of the crew nicknamed Lucky Spencer. Today, Wilkes hoped that he would be good luck for him as well. He was tired. It had been such an extremely long and exhausting day of riding around the woods following Rolando around, so much so that he was looking forward to setting his feet back onto the decks of the fortune following a cool bath in the river. Wilkes never saw the arrow as it flew silently through the air, like a needle, plunging solidly into his shoulder. His immediate reaction was one of surprise, with a slight laugh, followed quickly by the raising of his rifle with the other hand as he caught sight of James Rickton jumping out of the side of the trees. Wilkes, even though wounded, was able to spin around and take aim at Rickton. Seeing Wilkes' rifle barrel raise up out of the corner of his eye, Uriah reached over with his left hand to knock the barrel up into the air before Wilkes could get off a shot. He then heard the gunshot from behind, as Uriah felt a sharp sting in his back as he started to slump forward. Daniel struggled to get control of the wagon as he lifted the reins high into the air. Whoa, he shouted, taking the reins with one hand, while grabbing Uriah's shirt with the other to keep him from falling under the wagon. I got you, he hollered. Lucas Spencer had his rifle trained on Daniel's from the rear of the wagon. Don't move, mister, yelled Spencer. Wilkes, you okay up there? Yeah, I'm okay, I guess. Got a damned arrow stuck in me, though, stammered Wilkes, dropping his rifle down to the ground from the shooting pain in his shoulder. Wilkes slowly rolled off the side of the wagon, landing solidly in the dirt. On the wagon behind them, Daniels could hear Spencer start to speak again. Okay, mister, I know you're out there. Come out of the bushes right this minute. I've got my rifle pointed at your friend, so. There was a dull thud sound as Lucas's voice stopped suddenly. Daniels, hesitating to look until the wagon came to a complete stop, slowly turned around to see what was going on behind him in the rear of the wagon. As he turned, he saw Caleb standing on the end of the wagon, holding a large stick in his hand, and then he saw Lucas Spencer lying unconscious across the back of the wagon. Daniels raised an eyebrow, nice job. Thanks, replied Caleb. Daniels then turned around to see Nico and Rickton standing on the trail in front of them. Howdy there, boys. It's good to see you again. Good to see you too, smiled Rickton. Dang, I didn't even get to fire one shot. 
Well, don't sound too disappointed. You may have your chance yet before this day is through, insisted Daniels, turning his attention back to Uriah. Daniels lifted him up back into his seat and sat him upright. Uriah, are you okay? He asked. Caleb ran quickly up to the front of the wagon, helping Daniels with his father, who was groaning and nearly unconscious. Daniels, noticing that Caleb was getting worried, James, Nico, can you help me lift Uriah up and set him in the back of the wagon and lay him down? We will also need something to lay under his head to keep it propped up, said Daniels, looking over at Caleb. We could sure use one of those mid-kits if you have one, suggested Daniels, noticing the blood stain spreading across Uriah's backside. Caleb jumped off the wagon and ran back to the other wagon hidden behind the trees just down the trail. A minute or two later, he came back with a large red medkit bag in his hand. I grabbed an extra one before we left, explained Caleb. On the ground behind them, they heard a soft moan, suddenly realizing they had completely forgotten about one of Rolando's men, Mr. Wilkes, who still had an arrow sticking out of his shoulder. You shot him, Nico? asked Rickton. Yeah, first shot, from up there, Nico pointed to the trees above. Daniels and Richton both glanced up into the trees, whistling softly. Richton walked back to where Wilkes was lying in the dirt and pointed his rifle at him. We got to do something about these two. Anybody have a suggestion? Wilkes looked up, grimacing in pain. Please, don't shoot. I'm not going to cause you any trouble, I promise, cried Wilkes. What about your buddy lying over there? the one who just shot my friend in the back. You gonna tell me he's not going to cause any trouble as well, barked Richton, stepping over to pick Wilkes and Spencer's rifles up off the ground. I can vouch for him, he's just an overeager kid, eager to follow Rolando's orders, snarled Wilkes. Overeager to get us all killed, I'd say, chimed Daniels, busy tending to Uriah on the wagon. How does he look, Mr. Daniels? asked Caleb, climbing up onto the back of the wagon next to Daniels, who was making Uriah comfortable in the back. Caleb began opening the med kit. Daniels looked over at the kit. You got some scissors in that bag and anything to soak up the blood, he asked. Caleb shuffled through the bag. After helping Chalina this afternoon with Mr. Cardone's, he felt he had a solid familiarity with the contents of these kits. Caleb found the scissors and handed them to Daniels, then continued shuffling through the bag for the large wound dressings that Chalina used. Here it is, continued Caleb, ripping open the bag. If we place a couple of these on top of the wound, they'll soak up the blood really well, explained Caleb. Daniels took the scissors and began cutting open the bottom half of his shirt to get a better look at the wound. Well, the good news is it looks like the bullet went clean through. The bad news is we have to stop the bleeding and get him back to camp as soon as we can, or else he may go into shock, warned Daniels, placing Caleb's hand on top of the dressings and holding them down. Keep pressure on these, he told Caleb. So, what do we do now, guys? asked Richton, keeping his rifle trained on Wilkes and Spencer, who was just starting to come around. I say we head back to camp and get help for Uriah, suggested Richton. Can't do that. Rolando and his men are holding everyone hostage at my house, piped Daniels. No, they're not. They took off after we left, insisted Wilkes. Wilkes, be quiet. We have orders, remember, cried Spencer. Forget it, kid. Rolando's a ticking time bomb. He's going to get us all killed before this is over, moaned Wilkes. Hey, can one of you guys help me get this arrow out, asked Wilkes. You mean like this? asked Richton, reaching over and grabbing the arrow tightly, pulling it out in one quick pull. Ouch, damn it, you didn't have to do that, barked Wilkes. Richton chuckled as he tossed the arrow back to Nico. Nico grabbed the arrow that was just removed from Wilkes and looked over at Wilkes's shoulder, shrugging nonchalantly. Lucky for you, I didn't use my hunting arrows today, teased Nico. Nico walked over to the medical bag that Caleb had unloaded on the wagon, and he grabbed one of the dressing packs that was in the kit and tossed it over to Richton. Here, tell him hold this on top of his wound. I'll stop his bleeding. What do you mean they just took off? asked Richton, turning his attention back to Wilkes and Spencer. Wilkes opened his shirt and held the dressing on top of where the arrow went in and grimaced again. Right after we pulled out of your camp, Mr. Rolando sent Dominguez back to tell the rest of us that they were leaving and that they were taking some of your group back to the ship as trade for the guns. 
Rolando's word was that if we didn't get back there tonight with these guns, Rolando is going to ship off your group to Brazil and sell them off as slaves, explained Wilkes. You have a ship? Where is your ship? asked Rickton. Hell if I know, continued Wilkes, with all the twisting and turning we've been doing in these woods today, I'd be lucky to find my way to a saloon if they were giving away free pints of beer. Which I could really use right now, by the way, confessed Wilkes. Daniel shook his head and then looked over at Spencer. What about you, kid? Can you find the ship? What? You expect me to find the ship? I was counting on Wilkes to do that, sighed Spencer. Great, I can see that these two aren't going to be much help, moaned Rickton. I can find it, asserted Caleb. You, how the hell would you know where our ship is, kid? quipped Wilkes. I saw it in my vision, said Caleb, noticing the looks of disbelief on the faces of the others. I do know where it is. I can find it, insisted Caleb, recalling the vision he had of riding Teddy swiftly along the moonlit trail. Okay, well first things first. Let's pack up here and get Uriah back to camp. I think he's stable enough to travel. Rickton, you and Nico follow us back to camp in the other wagon. I will drive this wagon, while Caleb keeps an eye and a rifle on our two sailors here until we get back. Everyone got it, asked Daniels. Everyone nodded. Good, let's get going then. You have been listening to Caleb Elgin, The Rise of the Clans by David E. Farmer. Also available on Amazon Kindle. More chapters coming soon. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Bye-bye.